Hey guys, this is Shubhash Mishra, your test coach. Today we will discuss a very frequently asked manual testing interview question. What are the different test case design techniques you follow to write test cases? So, this is a very fundamental concept in manual testing which interviews expects you to know. So, here first we will try to understand what is a test case and then what are the different test case design techniques we follow to write it so first let's see what is a test case so a test case is a document which has a set of conditions or actions that are performed on the software application in order to verify the expected functionality of the feature so basically it is a document which contains all the step by step instructions to verify any functionality of the application or software. A test case contains test case summary or title, test steps, test data, precondition, expected result, actual result, test environment, status to verify any kind of requirements. For example, you have to test login functionality of a website. So, how you will test that? You have to write few test cases for that, right? You may have one test case like check results on entering valid user ID and password. Then you can have a second test case like invalid user ID and password. Then you can have a third test case where user ID is empty and login button you have pressed. So like that you can add many more test cases, right? So the question comes here, how you will derive these test cases or how you will design these test cases? Is there any technique which will help to write more test cases and to have a good testing coverage? So we have five different techniques which we follow to write test cases for any applications like boundary value analysis, equivalent partition, decision table based testing, state transition and error guessing. So let's go to boundary value analysis and understand what it is. Boundary value analysis is a technique to test boundary value between valid and invalid partition in test case design. Let me explain you with an example. Here we have a text box which can contain value from 1 to 100. So if you will give 0, it will not accept. If you will give 101, it will not accept. It will only accept the values from 1 to 100. So, how you will test it? What are the different test cases you will follow here? So, if you will follow boundary value analysis, so your boundary values are 0, 1, 2 and 9, 10, 11. So, what we did here? So, we have written one test case for exact boundary values, right? Uh, for the input domain, which means 1 and 100. So, we are telling this text box can contain values from 1 to 100. So, the exact values we can test here, we will put 1 and we will check whether we are able to uh, add 1 or not. Similarly, we will add 100 and we will check whether 100 is accepted or not. Similarly, one more test case just below boundary. So, boundary is 1. So, below boundary in the sense we can put 0. For 100, we can put 99. Right? So, this is the below boundary and one more test cases we can put which is above the boundary. So, above the boundary for 1 is 2 and 100 is 101. So, whenever someone is telling you have to test the boundary value analysis things, so you need to see what is the exact value for that text box or for that condition, then you can take some lower values, then that same value, then some upper values. So, here the boundary values are 0, 1, 2 and 9, 10, 11. For example, this text box can contain only from 20 to 50. Then what you will do? What are the different values you can test? You can test 19, 20, 21 and 49, 50 and 51. So, those are the boundary values for a text box having values 20 to 50. Fine. So, what happens? Uh, most of the times, errors are observed in the extreme ends of the input values. So, these extreme values like start or end values are called boundary values. And analysis of these boundary values is called boundary value analysis. So, sometimes we, we call it as range checking also. So, we are checking the different range 
so what it can take what it cannot take right so that's all about boundary value analysis we'll move to the next test case design technique which is equivalent partition dividing the test input data into a range of values and selecting one input value from each range is called equivalent partitioning this is a black box test case design technique used to calculate the effectiveness of test cases and which can be applied to all levels of testing from unit testing to integration testing or system testing or functionality testing we cannot test all the possible input domain values because if we try to do that the number of test cases will be too large so we can use equivalent partitioning where we can reduce the number of test cases and we can get a good coverage so here again i have taken the same text box which can contain values from 1 to 100 so what are the equivalence values here so this when we are telling it can take values from 1 to 100 it means if i will pass minus 2 it is a invalid value for me right it should not take minus 2 similarly if i will pass 110 it will also not take because it is an invalid value but the valid value is 50 here so what we did here we divided our inputs into two groups like invalid and valid and we are passing the values according to that because if we are testing here we, it is not able to take minus 2 then we know maybe it will not take minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 you don't really need to test with all those values right again from 1 to 100 it can take right so if you we'll start testing 2 3 4 till 99 100 so it there are so many test cases right so which again is uh, not possible right we cannot do that so to do that what we can do we can use only 50 which is a valid test case similarly after 100 it all are invalid so we just can take some random values like 110 or 1105 something like that and we can test so here we divided the input data and pass the values from each group right so this technique is used to reduce the test cases with best possible test cases which will give good test coverage let's move to the next test case design technique which is known as decision table based testing a decision table is also known as cause effect table this software testing technique is used for functions which responds to a combination of inputs or events for example we'll take amazon sign in page so here you can see the amazon sign in page right so here you can see the continue button then we have your name you have to enter here mobile number email and password email is optional but what will happen if you will not enter all these values right you if you click continue let's see if you click continue what is happening you are seeing all these values are empty right but if you will start entering something here then if you will try here you can see these two values are not these two values are showing you have to enter for example i put some mobile number now continue now i can see here similarly i will put some password and i will remove this and let me continue i can see it here right so this is how it happens as long as we will not fill all these values this con you cannot proceed forward you cannot click on continue button you can click on continue button but it will not move forward right so in decision table based testing the first task is to identify functionalities where the output depends on a combination of inputs so if there are large input sets of combinations then divide it into smaller subsets which are helpful for managing a decision table and for every function you need to create a table and list down all types of combinations of inputs and respective outputs this will help you to identify a condition that is overlooked by the tester so if we we'll go to our presentation here we can you can see right what we have done here name mobile number password and this continue everything we kept it here right and we have the rules here right so what we have done if you are not filling name mobile number password then you cannot click on continue right when everything is blank you can see right 
if you click continue it is showing right you have to fill all these things right similarly if we'll give something here right it is telling rule 2 true this is true and this is false false if i am entering something here and i am not entering in these two things still i am not able to but when i will enter everything properly then i will able to do it i can click on continue i can move forward right so this is possible so this is what is called decision table based testing let's move to the next test case design technique which is known as state transition state transition testing is used when a system has different states and the transition from one state to another are determined by the rules of the machine any system where you get a different output for the same input depending on what has happened before is a finite state system let me explain this with an example here you can see one diagram right so here we have seven states but only four possible events what are those one is car inserted other one is enter pin one more is pin okay and one more is pin not okay so basically what we are trying to do here so basically what we are doing here we are going to one atm atm machine and what we are doing we are inserting our card and we are entering the pin once we are entering the pin if the pin is okay then we are able to access to the account or we are getting money if we are entering wrong pin if the pin is not okay after three times of pin is not okay then our card is getting blocked right so here you can see right first time is card inserted you are then entering the pin this is the first attempt if pin is okay you are getting access to your account or you are getting money if pin is not okay then second time you are trying right then again if pin is okay you are getting access if pin is not okay third time you are accessing again the if pin is okay you are accessing to your account if pin is not okay you know after three times your card is getting blocked so what is happening here we are getting different output for the same input so here the input is same right you are entering pin but if it is it depending upon one state if it is the third attempt then your card will be blocked but here if you will your pin is not correct it will move to the second time you can do that it, your card is not getting blocked but in the third state it can be blocked so there are the different states or there are the different result for the same input but depending upon the state so that's why we have taken this uh, example to understand it so if you have to write test cases for this system right what are the different test cases you will write so a first test case is a very normal test case right you will insert the card and enter the pin then you have the access to the account then your second test case will be insert the card enter the uh, pin which is a, a wrong pin and do it for three times your card is getting blocked right this will this will be your second test case then maybe your third test case will be enter the uh, pin uh, first time you enter the incorrect pin second time you enter the correct pin then you are able to access the account again in the your fourth test case will be first time you are entering wrong pin second time you are entering wrong pin third time you are entering the correct pin and you are able to access the account so you are testing the different different states with the same input and you are able to identify what are the result of that right so you are covering all the different different states here that's why we call it as state transition now we'll move to our next test case design technique which is known as error guessing as the name say error guessing your tester guess the error and test the application it is an experience based testing technique where the tester or qa has experience to guess the problem area of the application this technique necessarily requires a skilled person or a experienced tester the error guessing is more dependent on the prior experience intuition and skills of the software tester on similar applications so the scope of error guessing generally depends on analyst and what type of involvement they have in the past as it doesn't have any specific rules 
this technique can be used to find some common mistakes like divide by zero entering blank spaces in the text fields pressing the submit button without entering values uploading files which exceeds the maximum limits you can get some null pointer exception invalid parameters and many more like this right then there are few guidelines for error guessing let me tell you that the tester should use the previous experience of testing similar applications tester should have very good understanding of the system which they are testing then the tester should have a good knowledge whatever getting implemented or getting developed then tester should remember the troubled areas as per their experience they know where and all issues are coming they can focus on those areas then tester can evaluate the historical data and test results so what and all happened previously what are the main focus areas as per the previous records where we get more issues so those are the main focus areas for error guessing thank you if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section i'll try to explain it please like share and subscribe to my channel